Welcome to worship this morning. Um, as always, everything you need is on the screen. Um, you're going to read the little thing at the right time this week. Don't look to me because I'll tell you wrong. Um, and uh, at home, uh, you're welcome to join us for communion. We do ask that you um, have uh, elements, bread and wine, as close to actual bread and wine as possible. Um, and when I uh, say the words of institution um, uh, with the bread and wine that you uh, honor, set apart that bread and wine for yourself in a way that feels um, uh, appropriate. And then as the congregation um, receives communion, you can um, take communion uh, yourself or, or with those who are with you, give them communion remembering the words um, given for you and uh, shed for you. Um, I think that's it for announcements for worship. Do we have any uh, updates or additions to our prayer list? Oh. Okay. So Keith, for um, additional, well, treatments because the cancer is spreading. Okay. Jill? Okay. Okay, so prayers for granddaughter Athena. Um, lots of things going on. Need to see the surgeon and braces on the legs. Yes, ma'am. Um, John had his surgery on Thursday, and everything went well. It was a quick surgery, so now he's in recovery. So just prayers for a quick healing. Okay. I don't have to repeat that because you said it into the microphone. Thank you. Uh, any others? Um, I'm just going to add my eldest. Um, he is uh, jobless again. And um, yeah, just he can use any help and support that you can give. Um, any others? Okay, let's take a moment and, oh, yes, Gail. For all the fathers, yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, let's um, prepare ourselves for worship.
can feel it. There's revival. Please rise as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
You may be seated for the readings. First lesson comes from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith could be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as, as, many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. With Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the, count, the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept underground and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these, so he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down, to the steep, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swineherds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. For many times it had, that can't be right. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the beauty of it, for the chance to come together, to be part of your world to be part of your family we ask that you send your holy spirit among us now open our hearts and our minds bless the words of my mouth that they carry to your people an understanding of what it is to be the children of god in your holy name we pray amen 
So today um, we start a sermon series um, that I'm basing on uh, the song "We Are the Church." Um, it's it's not a, a lot of times I follow the the way it's written out when I've done song ones before, and I went in order when I did the rose window, and this one's going to bounce all over. So you just got to go with it. Um, and, I, and I did that, and I just want to lay this out there. It was a long time before I did sermon series because I believe that as a church, um, we as Lutherans, we, f- we generally follow the Revised Common Lectionary, and I could go into all about what that is, but ask me later if you need to know. Basically, it's the readings that um, the majority of liturgical Christians around the world use each Sunday. So if you went to um, a Lutheran church on a Sunday, you would hear a set of readings, and then if you went to the Catholic church, and then to the Presbyterian church, and then to the Methodist church, that's a lot of churches to do in one day, but if you did all that, you would hear the same readings, uniting us. And I've always felt that's important. That's a big part of our Lutheran heritage. Martin Luther wanted the church to change in, in only the way, places where it was not good and, and wanted it to be united in as many places as possible. So I have, for most of my career, which is many years now, stayed away from sermon series. I don't like them, generally, um, because I like that connection. But the summer passages tend to get very repetitive, often about vines and doing things. So I've started putting in a summer series here and there, and and this time I wanted to connect it as closely to at least one of the lessons from the Revised Common Lectionary as possible. That's why we will be jumping around in the song, um, so that at least one of the readings that you hear today is from the Revised Common Lectionary. There's another one in there that I have pulled in to fill out each week, but, and I'm not, because honestly, I don't remember which one is which, because it's different every week, so (laughs) I'm not going to tell you which one, you can figure it out. What I want to look at today, though, is um, we are, okay, so now I got to do it, we are the church, the body of our Lord, we are all God's children, there it is. I want to look at we are all God's children, that line from the chorus that we sing over and over, we are all God's children. And it's one of those, it's, it's a line that you kind of look at and go, duh, yeah, you know, well, that's what we talk about. We talk about uh, um, the people who are members of the church as children of God. And that's, that's what it is. It just kind of has an obvious understanding. We talk about it in baptism when we baptize someone and they enter the church that they, be, they are a child of God. You are a child of God. You are marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. We, it, we say that. We, we talk about being children. Um, there's all kinds of places that we talk about children of God. One of the things that I love best about, in fact, one of the passages, the stories that has driven my ministry for all many years is the let the children come to me passage because in it we see Jesus loving children and he says if you do not accept if you do not understand the the kingdom of heaven like one of these you will not enter it because children don't they don't bring in all the baggage of the world because they haven't been soiled with it yet and so as children of God it's it's kind of our job because we have been soiled with it to get rid of that soil, that, that dirt, that baggage of the world that makes us look at things and go, oh, we can't do it that way because the whatever reason. So it's important when we think of we are God's children, we are all God's children, to remember children is important. Not just because we've been made part of the family, but because we are children, young, impressionable, un tarnished by the world. But it's interesting in this line because it's we are all God's children. And so it lifts up for me an understanding of who fits into that. Now, usually we would say, oh, we're all sitting here, so we're all God's children. Or um, all the baptized are all God's children. But 
we have sort of a different couple of things going on in these passages. We have the story of the Gerizim demoniac, um, this guy that's got legion, uh, has um, possessed him, um, bunches of demons, and there's a couple, re you've heard the story probably before, uh, if you haven't, it's a great story. Go back and read it again, because it's, it's really fun to see what Jesus does with things. Um, they beg him n not to send him out, so he sends them into pigs, and the pigs all drown. <laughs> I mean, it, I just love it. It's snarky. But the things that we need to kind of look at is, the first thing is, it tells us that the, that the region of, of the Gerizines was across from opposite Galilee. It was not a Jewish area. It was, it was not the chosen people. And so Jesus steps out of the boat into this foreign land. And one of the other ways you can know that it's a foreign land, it's not a Jewish area, is, well, there's swine herds. There's pigs. The Jews didn't have pigs. They didn't raise pigs. They didn't do anything with pigs. They thought pigs were bad because of the laws. and what, There's all kinds of reasons for that. But there would not have been pigs in a Jewish area. So Jesus has... For whatever reason, it doesn't give us a lot of, of reason, taking the boat across the lake to a place that is not Jewish and starts talking to people that are not Jewish. And the very first person he meets is a, is a person that is possessed. And back in that time, someone who was possessed was considered unclean and dangerous. And therefore, they were not allowed to be near a teacher. So the guy coming up to Jesus, that was bad in the first place. He wasn't supposed to do that. Jesus was known by that point as a teacher. It was obvious the way things, as he stepped off the boat, that he was important, and it was a bad thing for somebody that was possessed, that was considered unclean, to come near the teacher. But it was also, it also fell on the teachers back then to stay away from those people. You hear, we hear it throughout the Gospels, the Sadducees and Pharisees trying to stay away from those people and, and kind of freaking out because Jesus would go near them. And so he steps out off the boat in a non-Jewish area, is approached by an unclean person, and goes right into conversation with him. Right into conversation with this person who is obviously unclean. And he shouldn't have anything to do with it. And then he heals him. He heals the man, this non-Jewish person, this non-child of God, this person that shouldn't be part of the, the club. It's not really a club, but he heals him, which freaks everybody else out, but that's not as important as, and then when the man says, I need to take me with you, I want to be with you, Jesus says, no, I need you to go tell the story. I need you to go tell others who are also, by the way, not Jews, not the chosen people, not children of God. I need you to go tell them so they know, so that they can believe and have faith. This one story takes the definition that we have of children of God and expands it way beyond what we usually think way beyond what the church has done for centuries. The church has focused very much on the rules and the, and the, the um, uh, criteria for being a part of the church, for being a child of God, believing, following certain rules, baptism, faith in Jesus. You have to have all these things. You have to be able to say, I, in, the, in a lot of the American mostly non-liturgical churches, I believe Jesus is my Lord and Savior. This is the time when I was saved. You have to have all these rules and follow them to be a child of God. But Jesus didn't do that. He talked to a crazy person. I know in my other career as a therapist, we're not supposed to use the word crazy. But, I mean, you know what I mean. It was a, a possessed man, an unclean person. He brought him into the fold. And he didn't baptize him. Did you notice that? They were right by the lake. He could have done it really easily, but he didn't bother. He said, go and tell. Tell the story so others might believe. Others like you. Others that are not already following all the little rules. He didn't say, here's all the rules. By the way, here's the handbook, the membership book. Follow this. 
Like when you get a new job and they say, here's the, here's the job manual, you have to read this and sign off that you've read it and you're going to follow all the rules. And he didn't do any of that. He said, you're my child. And then we have this picture of, uh, in, in the other reading today, in the reading from Galatians, um, Paul writing to the, to the church in, in Galatia, um, and he's talking because there's arguments in that church about who's right and who's better and who's actually a member. Who, who fits on the membership list? Whether it's the active members or the inactive members or the friends of, of what, Galatia list or whatever. Who fits? Who follows the rule? Who can vote in meetings? Who gets to talk? Who is doing it right? And they're arguing. And Paul says, uh-uh. No. In baptism, you are all made equal. Equal. He says there is no Jew or Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female. None of that matters because Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for you. And you are a child of God. You all are children of God. I didn't plan it this way, but it, it struck me as I was preparing this week, um, and especially yesterday and today, because it's been very much uh, on the news. Today is Juneteenth. Uh, it's a new federal holiday, relatively new. If you don't know what it's about, you might want to do some reading, but it's basically celebrating when the last set of slaves in Galveston, Texas, found out that they had been freed. Two years after President Lincoln actually signed the Emancipation Proclamation, it took that long for somebody, a union general, to get to Galveston and say, what is going on? You've been freed. And so it's a celebration of freedom. It's a celebration of equality. I heard on the, uh, on the news today somebody suggesting the way that you celebrate Juneteenth is the way you celebrate July 4th because it's about freedom and equality. And it's, it's what it means to be a child of God. You are all equal and free. There is no Jew or Greek. There is no slave or free. There is no male or female. There is no Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist. There is no Christian or Jewish or uh, he's, he says it. He welcomes everyone. We are all God's children we sing about as we talk about the church. We are all God's children, all of us. The other thing that's going on, this is Pride Month, right? But it's the celebration of, of, used to be called Gay Pride, now it's called LGBTQ Pride, or I don't know. There's a lot of things. That's a whole different story. It's not. Because Sodom and Gomorrah had nothing to do with the people. It had nothing to do with the people. It had to do with the the towns did not welcome the strangers. It had nothing to do with anything else. No, it's not. Well, okay, we're not going to argue during my sermon. I'm happy to talk to you about it later, but <laughs> that's actually absolutely incorrect. Um, so the, the, the celebration of pride right now this month and this weekend in particular is the Pride Fest and next weekend is the Pride Parade and, and it's about people finally feeling equal. That the pride flag, the rainbow flag, my ex-wife hates that, that she thinks that it's been stolen from Christianity and I say no, it, it's not been stolen, it still means, it's still the promise of God. The, the rainbow was a, a note of the promise of God. And it still means that. 
It's still for everyone. And in the gay community, it means you are welcome. You are part of God's world and God's family. And that's the celebration that we have. We are all children of God. We are all together. God loves. God is not about keeping people out. God is not about arguing who's right and who's wrong. God is not about what you do or don't do is what makes you Christian. God is about love. And what makes you a child of God is the love of God. We are all God's children. Amen. rise as you are able. And raised again to new life, baptized into the death of Christ, and raised again to new life. Down, 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 I was seeking down in sin, killing me, killing me from deep within. Put me to death that day. And the family of God stood up to say, Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Down, down, down in the water, down I went. into the death of Christ and raised again to new life baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life sing, sing, sing to the ones we have not heard we've been washed by the water and the word we sing with every breath we will share his life like we shared his death. Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Baptized into the death of Christ and raised again to new life. Let us proclaim our faith with the whole church, all the children of God, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
for today's prayers of intercession. We will end each petition with, hear, uh, with God of grace and invite you to respond with, hear our prayer. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth. Restore places where land, air, and waterways have become harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially white supremacy. Bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace, hear our prayer. Hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick, especially all we serve through Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry, everyone on our congregation's prayer list, and those we name silently or out loud now. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness that they can clearly re recognize your loving presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them. At the last, unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us share that peace with another. Please rise if you're able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit 
uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your holy name. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Please be seated. At faith, we believe that all of God's children are welcome at the Lord's table. Out of an abundance of caution, we ask that you sanitize your hands before approaching the table. We offer fresh bread and traditional wafers. If you prefer the wafer, please make that known when you come forward. The communion assistant will offer you the tray of wine so that you may take your own individual cup. The outer rings of the tray are red wine, while the inner rings are white non-alcoholic wine. Please place your empty cup in the collection tray as you return to your seat. All are welcome to come forward for a blessing instead of the bread and wine. We will start with this side of the church and continue with this side. And for those of you participating from home, you may commune yourselves and those around you with the words given and shed for you at this time.
please rise as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Any personal celebrations or announcements? Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Great, great granddaughter, number three. Wow, okay. Any others? Okay, let's remember who we are. A community of disciples embodying the unconditional love of Jesus with a firm commitment to the feeding of body and soul. Uh, I don't actually have any. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, <laughs> it's kind of a big one too. Hopefully uh, you got the email invitation. Um, the voting members got an email invitation to the cottage meetings. Uh, if you did not, talk to one of the council members or myself. Um, if you need help signing up for them, uh, let us know. Um, yeah, that's good. It's cottage meetings about the future of faith. That's what we're talking about. Okay? Uh, yeah, let's sing. Let your light shine out in the world. 
in peace. Love your neighbor, feed the hungry.